guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. If you are not new and you've been around for a while, then you already know that I'm not only obsessed with sunscreen, but I am obsessed with Asian sunscreen. Did I just look possessed? I don't know what just came over me. If you've never tried an Asian sunscreen before, you are in for a treat, but even if you have tried one before and you're just looking for a new recommendation, you're still in for a treat. I have a lot of goodies to share with you today. If you're not really familiar with Asian sunscreens, they are notorious for being incredibly lightweight. They apply beautifully to the skin. They're not greasy. <laughs> greasy okay they're beautiful and finish and they leave zero white cast so i am super excited for today's video because i am going to be sharing my top 10 favorite asian sunscreens with you as usual with my sunscreen reviews we will talk through ingredients feel finish and which skin type i think each of these would be best for i honestly feel like almost all of these sunscreens would work well with pretty much any skin type, but if there is a sunscreen where I think, you know, it's maybe a little bit more catered towards a certain skin type, then I will definitely let you know that as well. And so that you can really get a feel for each of these sunscreens, I will be showing you a little sunscreen swatch on the back of my hand so that you can see the texture up close. And of course, I'll apply two applications of each of these sunscreens on camera so that you can not only see how they apply to my skin, but the finish of each of them after they have had a chance to fully absorb. So if you're on the hunt for a beautiful new sunscreen, then you've come to the right spot. But before we jump into it, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and drop a comment below letting me know how you are doing today. I hope you guys are doing great and thank you so much for doing those things. It really helps to support me with the YouTube algorithm, so I appreciate you so much. If you need anything from me, check out my description box below. I have Lightroom preset filters for editing your Instagram photos, my SPF merch, timestamps, discount codes, links to all the sunscreens that I'll be talking through and links to my other favorite beauty products of all time. All right. I can't wait. Okay. Before I show you the first sunscreen, I want to explain this concept that I came up with when I was thinking about how to describe the finish of each of these sunscreens to you. I will say a lot of these, yeah, there's similarities for sure. It's not like they're all that crazy different, but there are slight differences in texture or feel or finish that I think really help you to figure out which is going to be your ultimate favorite sunscreen. So because I feel there's different levels of glow on the skin, I came up with the idea of a glow meter. And this is how I'm going to break it down. On one end of the glow meter, we have a matte finish. To me, this is something that actually diminishes the appearance of oils, tones down oils. So for some that can make the skin look really dry. I don't actually have any sunscreens in this video that are matte like that, but I do have several options here that have a natural finish. A natural finish to me is something that just dries down naturally and doesn't mattify your oils, but also doesn't really enhance your glow in any way. Then we have what I would consider to be glowy sunscreens. These are sunscreens that make your skin look like you have a healthy glow, but they're not so, so overly glowy that they make your skin look kind of wet and juicy. It's a little more toned down. Second to last, we have a radiant finish, which to me, I think of as any sunscreen that has a little bit of a pearlized finish to it. That like luminance that's due to pearlized pigments and not just from glowy hydrating ingredients. Does that make sense? And then last is that truly dewy finish, which I think makes the skin look, yeah, a little bit wet and plump and juicy and is amazing for dry skin. So we have a little bit of everything in this video. I am going to talk about these sunscreens in order of the lightest weight texture to the creamiest, but these are all lightweight. They're all incredible. Let's dive into it. That is enough of that. First up, we have a fan favorite that has been around for a while. This is definitely an OG in the Asian sunscreen space, so I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this, but in case you're not, I will break it down quickly. This is the Skin Aqua UV Super Moisture Gel. It is an SPF 50 and has a PA rating of plus, 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 just like all the rest of the sunscreens in this video. This has a mixture of old and next generation chemical filters, including octanoxate, tinazor, 
absorb S and uvenyl T150, and it also has a couple hydrating ingredients like hyaluronic acid and arginine. Something to note about this sunscreen that I will make sure to point out for the rest of these options is that alcohol is second on the label here. I know that alcohol is definitely a very demonized ingredient in the skincare space, but I personally don't think it's something that people need to freak out over. It's just something to be aware of. If you have super, super dry, dehydrated skin, if you have a lot of irritation going on, then you may want to avoid a sunscreen that has a high alcohol content like this one. Otherwise, this does not irritate my skin. None of these sunscreens do. And alcohol serves a purpose in this and is one of the reasons why this is such an incredible sunscreen. It allows this to be super, super lightweight and water-like and to dry down basically instantly. So I will call out any sunscreens that have a high amount of alcohol for those of you that are really dry or dehydrated or irritated. The last two things to know are that this is fragrance and essential oil free and is water resistant. So like I was saying, this has a water-like texture that is basically as lightweight as it gets for an Asian sunscreen. As you're rubbing it into the skin, it feels even more watery. And again, it dries down so quickly, it pretty much dries down instantly. And once it does, it feels like you're wearing nothing. On me, this definitely has a natural finish. I do have skin that leans oily, so keep that in mind. I'm just sharing my thoughts on the finish on the skin that I already have obviously, because what else would I do? So not one that mattifies my skin, but definitely not one that gives me any sort of extra glow. So because of all of that, I think that this will be an amazing option for any of you that are normal to oily to even extra oily. If you want a sunscreen that truly feels traceless and that doesn't make your skin look any glowier than it already is, then this is going to be the one for you. You will love it. Next, we have the Vertio UV Moisture Gel. And if you watch my top five Japanese sunscreens video that I posted about a year ago, then this name may sound familiar to you. They actually reformulated this this year. So I was freaking out because I was obsessed with the original Vertio sunscreen and I was worried that I would not be as obsessed with this one. We'll get to that in a second, but this is a combination sunscreen with old and next generation chemical filters as well. So it has octanoxate, uvenyl A+, titanium dioxide, uvenyl T150, and tinazorb S as the sunscreen filters. When they reformulated this, they added a lot of really nice ingredients that the first sunscreen did not have. So this now has Centella Asiatica, which is a really nice hydrating ingredient that is anti-inflammatory and has wound healing properties. And this has several different plant extracts that can benefit the skin in different ways, like Job's Tears, Moringa, Chinese Skullcap, and Edelweiss. Plus this has vitamin E. This is also fragrance free and is water resistant for 40 minutes. This is also an incredibly lightweight sunscreen. It's very liquidy and runny in consistency, but I do think it feels a little bit more hydrating than the Skin Aqua sunscreen. So if you want a sunscreen to add a little bit of hydration, but not be super creamy, then you will really enjoy this. This definitely does give me a glowy finish to the skin. When I was comparing it to the original Vertio sunscreen, I do feel like the original had more of that like radiance to it where there was something going on, a little bit of those pearlized pigments in it. And this does not seem to have that same kind of finish. It's a little bit less intense. Not that that was intense, but you know what I mean? It's a point of comparison. So it's glowy, but it's not over the top. And this is one that I really do think would work with pretty much any skin type unless you're super, super oily and you want something that feels as traceless as Skin Aqua or completely mattifies the skin. Otherwise, I feel like you can't go wrong. And like I was saying in the intro, some of these sunscreens don't feel all that different from one another, but if you're an Asian sunscreen lover, then you know that those slight changes in feel or finish do make a big difference in the overall experience and what you're looking for. And this video is for sunscreen lovers only, so. Okay, let's move on. Next, we have the Can Make Mermaid Skin, Mermaid Skin Gel UV. Okay, yeah. This is a combination sunscreen with octanoxate, uvenyl A+, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, and tinazorb S as the filters. This also has arginine and hyaluronic acid for some added hydration, and on top of that has some hydrating and brightening plant extracts. It is fragrance-free, but it is not water-resistant. This feels like a gel lotion, but similar to Skin Aqua, starts to go pretty watery as you're rubbing it in and dry down to really not feel like you have anything on the skin 
skin. It is something that I do think is a little bit more hydrating than that one, but similar kind of vibe. The biggest difference I would say is in finish on my skin. This definitely does give me a little bit of a radiant finish. You can see in the sunscreen swatch that there's definitely some sort of pearly, pearlescent, luminous element to this sunscreen. So this definitely does enhance the radiance of my skin, but I still think that it's subtle. When I compare this to other illuminating primers or sunscreens like the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter, that one is definitely a lot more luminous on the skin than this. So this is just, yeah, a little bit more of a subtle option, but I think really pretty on the skin. So if you have oily skin and you do want something to enhance the glow of your skin, maybe you're using a mattifying toner or moisturizer underneath and you want a little bit of life brought back to the skin without it looking wet and greasy, then I think that you will enjoy this. Otherwise, if you have normal to dry skin, I think that you will love this as well. Next up, we have the Suncut Perfect UV Protect gel. This has old and next generation chemical filters, including octanoxate, polysilicone 15, uvinyl A+, and tinazorb S. Inactive ingredient highlights worth mentioning here include plant extracts like chamomile and algae, hyaluronic acid, and squalane, which is a nice softening ingredient. This does have alcohol towards the top of the label, but it is fragrance free and water resistant. This feels the most like a true gel out of any sunscreen in this video. So if you love a really gel like texture that just feels lightweight and refreshing on the skin, then you will really enjoy this one. This also does seem to have a tiny bit of that pearlescent finish to it, but it's not as much as the can make sunscreen and it's subtle. So I feel like once this is dried down on my skin, it's more just like a soft glowy finish that I think is really nice. So this will be for you if you have normal to oily skin. I don't know that you'll love it if you have dry skin just because of that higher alcohol content, but don't worry. We have plenty more options for you like this one right here. Nice segue. Okay, <laughs> this is the Isentry Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. I love this sunscreen so much. This also has old and next generation chemical filters, including octisalate, homosalate, tinazorb S, tinazorb M, polysilicone 15, and uvinyl A+. This has tons of amazing extra ingredients in it, like hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, centella asiatica, ceramides to replenish the skin, soothing plant extracts, and antioxidants, including things like vitamin E and astaxanthin. And it's fragrance free, but not water resistant. Now we're moving away from the more gel textured sunscreens into sunscreens that have more of a lotion-y texture. So this feels like an incredibly lightweight lotion. It's really nice and hydrating. I always get so excited to apply this because it just feels so nice on the skin. And this is definitely a finish that I would consider to be a bit dewier where it just, yeah, makes the skin look juicy. So I think that you will be most fond of this if you have normal to dry skin, but for what it's worth, I have oily skin and I still freaking love this. So just depends on how glowy you want your skin to look. Not all of us with oily skin want matte skin, just saying. Next, we have the Prem UV Defense Me Sunscreen. This only has next generation chemical filters, including Uvinyl A+, Uvinyl T150, Tinazorb M, and Tinazorb S. Inactive ingredient highlights include sunflower oil, plant extracts like pear, peach, and melon, and and vitamin E. I want to eat a pear, peach, and melon right now. This is fragrance free, but not water resistant. This is also a lightweight lotion, but it's a little bit milkier than the Isentry sunscreen. And I don't know about you guys, but I die for any skincare product that feels milky. Ugh, I just think it's so dreamy to apply, but again, it's super lightweight. So you're getting that kind of milkiness without the thick creamy feel that some milky products tend to have. This has a really nice glowy finish. It's starting to lean a little bit more dewy. I think it really depends on the skincare products that you have underneath it. Like if you have a really thick moisturizing cream, then it's more likely to look dewy versus if you have a super lightweight moisturizing gel lotion it'll look glowier. So this is one that I do think works really well with all skin types again. Next, we have the Skinnic Enjoy Super Mild Sun Essence, one I am obsessed with lately. This has all next generation chemical filters like Uvinyl A+, Tinazorb S, Polysilicone 15, Tinazorb M, Uvinyl T150, and Uvazorb HEB. Or is it UVA Zorb? 
I don't know. Tons of amazing and active ingredients in this one. Niacinamides and teleasiatica, hyaluronic acid, panthenol, green tea, and adenosine, and it's fragrance-free. Not water resistant though, so not one to wear on a hot, sweaty run outside. This is like a gel lotion hybrid, definitely a little bit creamier or thicker than some of the original gel sunscreens that I showed you. But again, incredibly lightweight. I am obsessed with this. I cannot stop reaching for it. I just think it feels so, so nice. It's another that dries down pretty quickly, even though it doesn't have a high alcohol content. I, I just love everything about this and it gives me a really beautiful glowy finish. So another that I think really anyone would love unless you have crazy oily skin and you want that matte look. Otherwise, I just can't imagine anyone who would not love this sunscreen. It's so good. And I feel like no one talks about this. I did include this in a video where I talked about over and under hyped products. If that's not up yet, stay tuned. Otherwise, if it is, I will list it below because I feel like this is under hyped and it needs more. Third to last, we have the Beauty of Jozon sunscreen. This people have been freaking out about over on TikTok for a while. I feel like this is probably the most viral, well, probably tied with Skin Aqua as the most viral sunscreen in this video, but I guess this one still probably wins because more viral recently, whereas this is like just a classic. This has next generation chemical filters, including Uvinyl A+, Uvinyl T150, Tinazorb M, and Uvisorb HEB. A lot of the same inactive ingredient highlights as Skinic, like niacinamide, adenosine, green tea, rice ferment, sugar extracts, and probiotic ingredients. So some really nice ingredients to strengthen and protect the skin barrier on top of hydration and calming. You'll love to see that. It's fragrance free, but not water resistant. I just can't get comfortable in this chair. Excuse me. This feels like a very lightweight lotion compared to the Skinic sunscreen. It's just a little bit less gel-like, I think. Again, I'm really trying to pinpoint differences here, but it feels so nice. I understand why people are so obsessed with this. It's just such a solid sunscreen. And this one leaves my skin looking naturally glowy, I would say. So another that I think all skin types would really, really love. If you have normal to dry skin and you want something that's just a little bit lighter weight on top of a really thick moisturizer, but you don't want something like Skin Aqua that has that higher alcohol content, you'll love. Second to last is a brand name that I'm not sure how to pronounce because the word that is similar to this, like H-Y-G-G-E is pronounced Huga. Apparently, that's what Google says, but this has two E's. So I'm like, is this high key? I don't know, but it's their vegan sun cream. This has next generation chemical filters, including Uvinyl A+, Tinazorb S, Uvinyl T150, Amaloxate, and Parcel SLX. Standout and active ingredients in this include niacinamide, beetroot, a couple sugars like sucrose and fructose, adenosine, which is a nice replenishing ingredient. And this one does have alcohol in it, second on the label. And this is fragrance free, but not water resistant. This is like a gel cream hybrid. So if Skinic is a gel lotion, this is definitely a bit creamier, but it still does feel very lightweight and dry down quickly. It's not one that feels heavy whatsoever. And even though this has alcohol second on the label, this is a sunscreen that definitely does leave my skin feeling more moisturized than some of these other options. So this is really just going to be dependent on how it agrees with your skin. If you have normal to oily skin, but you like a little bit of a creamier feel to a sunscreen, then you will really enjoy this. If you have, I don't know, normal to oily skin that is a little dehydrated, I think this would be a nice option. Not sure if you'll love it if you have dry skin. The last one you definitely will. I'd be curious to know, for those of you that have dry skin, if you've tried this, does it work well with your skin? I can't speak on that because I'm not dry, but I feel like it would work better than some of these other ones. Let me know. And last is the G9 White In Milk Sun Sunscreen. This is a combination sunscreen with octanoxate, zinc, and uvinyl A plus as the filters. Tons of nice ingredients in this. I mean, are these sunscreens like not the sunscreens, the company is talking to each other about what ingredients to put in them because we see a lot of the same themes, niacinamide, adenosine, green tea, but this also has licorice root, panthenol, tons of plant extracts and oils like mango and evening primrose and vitamins C and D. Something to note about this one is that it is not fragrance free. It does have fragrance in the middle of the label and some fragrant plant extracts like rose and eucalyptus, but this to me doesn't really have 
any sort of noteworthy smell. This does have alcohol in it, but it's towards the middle of the label. So I do think that that is different than something like Skin Aqua, where it's second and just so lightweight, dries down instantly. Not the same experience here because this is definitely the creamiest sunscreen out of all of these. I think it feels the most moisturizing. It's very soft. It does have a tiny bit. I don't even want to say an oily slip because it doesn't feel oily on my skin, but it's just so soft and conditioning. It's really, really nice and definitely gives me the dewiest finish out of all of these sunscreens. So I think you'll love this if you have normal to dry skin or if you just, again, enjoy a little bit of a creamier sunscreen. I still like it with oily skin. <laughs> That was a lot to get through, but we made it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you found a sunscreen that you are super excited to try out, or maybe you've tried all of these. If you've tried all of these sunscreens, we are soulmates. Let me know in the comments below. I'll contact you after this. I'm just kidding, I won't. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which sunscreen are you most interested in? Is there one that you think would work best with your skin that you're going to test out? Are there other Asian sunscreens that you think I need to know about? Odds are I already know. I actually have eight other sunscreens that did not quite make the cut for this video, even though they are all still amazing. It was actually so hard for me to cut some of those off. So if you wanna see a part two with even more sunscreens that I love, different options for feels and finishes, let me know I can do that. Or if this was plenty, um, I get it. So as always, all of the sunscreens that I talked about will be listed and linked in my description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, click on that notification bell and send my channel to a friend. Thank you for doing all of those things. Your support means the world. Thank you for watching. I love you guys so much. Make sure to stay tuned for my next video because that will be up in a few days. But until then, I hope you have a great few days. Bye.